This is when I met James Dunn. <coughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? Hey James, how are you doing? Hi. Hi, Hi, Kenny. Hey, Kenny, nice Hi, to meet you. Tommy? Nice to meet you. Have a good journey. Oh, it was really good, thank you. How are you doing? You all right? I'm good, yeah. yeah. Good, good. Oh, I'm so happy to be Come here. Come on in, you must be shattered. Oh, after yeah, after thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so my name's oh, wow. James Dunn and I'm 23. I suffer from a rare genetic skin condition called recessive dystrophic epidermolysis bullosa. Basically, I'm missing the glue in between each layer of skin. Therefore, my skin will just peel off blister and scar with friction, leaving wounds all over my body. I have lots of hobbies. Um, one of the main things is photography. I love getting out and taking pictures and it seems to sort of take my mind off the pain and it allows me to express myself creatively and use it as, as a way of being happy and positive and pain free. So yeah, it's a great hobby. I'm really looking forward to Tommy's visit, you know, we've been talking about it for a while now over Facebook and now it's actually here, I'm really excited. The main things I'm excited about is getting, getting to know my camera more, getting to know manual mode, learning about flash, learning about different styles of photography and yeah, I know I like taking pictures and I know, I know what makes a good photograph but I'm not keyed up on the technicalities of how to use a camera and that's what Tommy, I'm hoping Tommy will teach me. I was saying to Mike in the car over here James, it's really cool that we can finally meet because we, yeah. we spoke um, around January time I think yeah. and uh, we, I, I wanted it to make it my kind of January personal project and what with my commitment, your commitment and Mike's commitments, it's, yeah. uh, it's good that we can finally now well, yeah, I was, find in, I was in hospital at the start of the year so I couldn't deal with many things, but it's good to be up and about again. And yeah, didn't you say you had a, um, an operation? Hand operation, yeah. Okay. Yeah, on my hands to separate my fingers, but that's all good now. So yeah, but Fantastic. I'm thankful that you got in contact with me and we were managed to sort something. Yeah, well, I was just I, I was just really inspired when I when I saw uh, when I saw the the documentary uh, when it went out. I am. Um, um, I just I really like the passion that you had for photography. I, I kind of saw myself in you and how passionate you were and how yeah. you know nothing stopped you. So I, that's why I was really keen and I just just felt you know compelled to find you on Facebook and just leave that message. And I remember um, I just said, oh, if you need any help, let me know. And you said you said like you're learning a bit more about your camera yeah. now. You can use it. Um, well, uh, yeah, the, the the TV program sort of. Was portrayed me as a professional photographer but I'm definitely not I'm just, <laughs> it's just a hobby which I want to learn more about and cool. start using it to its full potential it's very high tech I know it looks it looks incredible
So how, how, just how much of a difference has this made? Because before, I mean, from the documentary, yeah. um, your dad was um, help, helping you frame the shots. Um, yeah, well, my dad's, as you can see, my dad's still setting it up for me, but once this is all set up, I can do everything myself. Cool. So, um, yeah, before my dad was holding the camera and I was <laughs> telling him what to do. <laughs> nice getting sheltered up. <laughs> yeah, so I go on the phone. And there it is, Zocus, so that's what they designed for me, the red app there. Zocus, amazing. So one does the focus, one does the view. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's it. So everything, basically everything I can do on that, you can do on this. And this, this is why another reason I really wanted to come, because uh, obviously they're not going to go into great detail on the documentary but I wanted to know like how you know how, how do you change your aperture and ISO yeah. even if you could they're obviously not going to go into that much detail but someone like me would want to know yeah. um, that exactly. the technical details is there any technical um, rules when editing you've got to follow or is it purely your your outlook on the picture and your creativity? I'd say the latter. I'd say it's totally your your, your thing. Your it's your art. I, I can always offer you advice, but that's all it will be because photography and any art is subjective. It's yeah. in the eye of the beholder, right? So yeah, it's that's what, what you. I think. Yeah, it's what it's whatever you think. And if you're if you're if you're happy with it, but someone else doesn't like it. It's your art and it felt right at the time right yeah. at the time it felt like well that's the right colors I'm, I'm happy with that then then that's fine and you and then if you keep doing it you'll eventually adopt your own style and you'll find that you're editing your photos yeah. similarly and then soon soon uh, pretty soon it'll be like that's a James Dunn picture yeah. because people will know that that's your style that's how you shoot and that's how you edit because yeah. how you edit the photo is almost 50 percent of um, as important as the yeah. taking of the, the picture because that's where you can be just as creative in the editing program as you can um, when you take the photo. Yeah. You can I mean you can go crazy with Photoshop, but in terms of colour, I like I like to keep things simple in terms of setting up my portraits and keeping the colours. Um, I like to keep them muted, mm -hmm. and that's my style. Some people like it really contrasty, really vibrant, yeah. and they like it. Maybe it's not my cup of tea, but that's all it is because it's it's subjective if that makes yeah. sense we can look at um one of your images one of my images and i could say well maybe this needs to be a little bit brighter or maybe it needs to be a little bit yeah. darker we can have a look at may maybe what i i think i would do to the image and then what you would do and then we can kind of compare and meet in the middle cool yeah all right do you want to do you want to get a photo of me yeah definitely yeah cool. all right so Let's do it. i'll come in front of you All right, let's have a look what we got. The natural look. I think the angry, the angry oh, slash okay. psychotic one was much better. Yeah. <laughs> so the first day I met Tommy was amazing. We spent a while getting to know each other and just um, talking and chatting. And then I, I enjoyed learning about, um, yeah, about the camera with his informative PowerPoint and keynote he created, you know, sitting down and getting visual visual representation of what each program the camera means and what each setting means and just lit. It was the full day's learning, but it was also fun to, to get to know each other. that's why for a split second when it goes black what's happening is the mirror is moving out the way so that light can pass through and hit the sensor so that your image is made all right so this is your shutter curtain all right when you when you have it open for one second one and then it closes now in that time you had you had light coming in so if you had it open for three seconds it's going one two three so you got three what if I want to shoot at 1.4 well, I can't do it on this £2,000 lens, but I can do it on a £350 lens. Let's just say I photograph this white, wind, this white wall here. I'm going to put my camera into auto mode and I'm going to take a shot of this white wall. Now, that's not white, is it? No, it's, it's grey. 
that's come out grey because I because in that split second the camera thought, oh, that's too bright. I need to bring it down. So by doing the second option, you would still get the same exposure. But you get a better picture. Hundred percent right. Yeah. That's it. Got it, James. Yeah. That's it. Perfect. Well, well, that's basically um, that's the basics of the three uh, the three elements and the exposure triangle. So now I think the best thing to do would be now to to go out and we can put what we've learned into practice yeah. and uh, and we can now kind of walk through it. So like, right, we want to take a photo of this. So what's our setting uh, priority and how do we get there? Does that sound yeah, good? Yeah, I'd love to do that. Let's get out and start shooting. Let's do it. And by the way, it's not usually this clean. <laughs> That's cool, man. No worries. I just drive into place and then that's done, it locks in automatically. Oh my god, that's so cool. Yeah, so well, off we go. It's crazy, it's so cool. I imagine now it's just second nature to you, right? Yeah. Just like uh, anyone else driving. My driving instructor, he, he taught people in wheelchairs but never with these controls. Really? So it was a learning curve for both of us. We were both <laughs> like, uh, what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> My car basically is, um, everyone calls it something like got back to the future or, you know, look into the future because it's very technical. But um, yeah, it's amazing. It's given me the independence to be able to get out there and drive on my own, which is fantastic. So on the left side, it's like a mini steering wheel which I use to control the direction of the car just like you would a normal steering wheel. And on the right side, I've got a mini joystick which controls the acceleration and brake. So I push forward to brake, pull back to Matic, but I don't have to touch a steering wheel at all. I just use two little cool joysticks which look good and enable me to drive a car and be independent. So yeah, it's fantastic. Going out and getting the sunset was epic, getting that sunset and uh, yeah, just taking advantage of the golden hour, which is something I've never done before. Um, yeah, I, didn't, I thought there was only one golden hour in the day and that's the morning and I'm not good at morning, so there's no chance I get off the sunrises, but sunset was a good one. That's a really good first day, James. Yeah, I've loved it. It's, it's been really brilliant. Full, fulfilled, really action-packed. Looking... Sorry? Fulfilled action packed day. Action packed. You, re you really have taken uh, uh, much more in than other people do that, really? um, that I teach, yeah. See, I, I was expecting to be not very good, to be honest, at absorbing all the information. No, well, you've been really, really good. Do you feel, did, did, did it feel like it? Yeah, it no, I did. It it was, as soon as you sat down with me with that PowerPoint, I just the visual aspect of it, it just seemed to absorb everything straight away oh. and that's what I've been wanting to do because I've been YouTube tutorials, vlogs and nothing's been sinking in, I just needed someone to sit down with me and teach me. Oh cool man, yeah. no, I'm, ple I'm pleased you liked it, yeah. have a, another cool day tomorrow, I'm yeah. really looking forward to that Sergeant Pepper thing, that should be I really am. good, should yeah. Alright, it's the start of day two, um, the first day went so so well when we arrived um i was so happy to meet james and the family are so so welcoming um we we had such a good day the first thing we did was we were looking at 
um, James's camera rig, which was, I mean, I saw it on the documentary like um, thousands of people did last year and it was, went to see it in person, it was so cool because I wanted to know a little bit more technically about it, which they wouldn't show in, um, in the show. Like, I didn't even know if James had the ability to change his settings manually. So driving up here, I was actually thinking, okay, I'm coming up to teach him how to use his camera in manual mode, but is he going to be even be able to change manual settings? And um, so when he showed me how on his tablet he can change uh, the settings manually if he wanted to, I was really happy that he had the ability to do, to do that. It's just, it's just incredible how he is able to take full control um, of, of his camera. But I think I was even more surprised that he was able to drive when I saw that um, his setup for his driving, it was incredible. I had no idea that a car like that even existed. Um, I saw it in the documentary last year, but it was really nice to see it in person. And when James um, offered to drive to the sunset location, I was, um, I was actually really excited and I'm glad he said that because I really wanted to see, the, uh, see his car and see him drive. And it, so it was a really cool experience um, yesterday. We're gonna um, be driving again today. Um, it should be really fun. When we first got into town, I decided to book me and Tommy into this place called, exhibition called the Illuminarium in Liverpool. And it's the 50th anniversary this month of Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club, the Beatles album. Um, so they brought this huge light show to Liverpool. It's really hard to describe. It's like this epic light show in a in a giant tent of bubbles. You just walk through, and all these colours are created through natural light. It looks like there's a load of amazing light techniques and LEDs in the tent, but there's actually not. It's just clever use of light, and it was amazing because it was visually and creatively good to see but obviously light is good to you know it's the main thing in photography too so they both link in together and yeah it was fun it was really fun after the luminarium james asked me to give him his medicine how often do you have to have the morphine so i usually have it every three hours every three hours yeah and there's never a time when i'm not in pain but just get used to it because I can't be high on painkillers all the time. So. <laughs> Can you imagine? I know, just yeah. give you a, just give you a few yeah. shots of this. Because I've been on it for like twenty odd years, it doesn't really make me high. Oh really? It doesn't okay. Affect me like that. Well, I'll just give you the one, then we won't go. We won't. No, uh, don't go we, the whole full. We won't go the whole full. Oh, that's fine. You don't yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just. It, I don't know, my girlfriend said to do that, I don't know. Yeah, I know, uh, all right. you've been trained a professional, but we ain't professionals yet. <laughs> okay, so, uh, all right. Just lift that up, and oh. then, that. Should be this. Oh, there it is, okay. And you just pop it open. Like that, yep. Yeah. 
to make sure that's fully in. Okay, and then just, is it kind of fast or? As, as fast or slow as you want to go. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for doing that, man. That's great help. Of course, man. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. So I'll just put that back in there? Yeah. Cool. Is that okay? Yeah, it's great. Cool. Oof. I think I was more nervous no. than you were. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> no. <laughs> Lethal injection. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh no, it's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't do that, James. Just you know it's going to be wanting you for nice me for years. <laughs> I've just pulled you into it. <laughs> every day I take morphine throughout the day, every two to three hours to help with the pain because there's never a time I'm not in pain and the morphine just kind of, kind of helps ease it a bit. But every other day I have to change my bandages, which takes about four to five hours a day. Um, I start off, strip all the bandages off, cream, cleanse myself with, you know, wash, antiseptic wash, antibacterial wash, give myself a good clean, all the wounds a good clean, and then I wrap them back up again. So you can see it, it takes a while to do that and it's quite hard, but it needs to be done when you've got a condition like this. Um, and yeah, it, when I've got infections, it's even worse because the wounds aren't particularly nice, they're a bit mucky, um, hot, sweaty, uncomfortable, but it's just, just got to do it and it's just part and part of life with EB. So, so change yeah. that to about 7.1, yeah? Yep. Okay, cool. So now it looks like it's, well, too it's, it's too dark, yeah. but that's actually a good thing because what we're going to do is um, light it up with flash. Light it up with flash because the flash is going to be a lot brighter than the light we have here because yep. this existing light here is called ambient light and then we've got our flashlight okay so if you want something dramatic then you need to kill the ambient light as they call it okay. so you want to make this this light dark then once that's dark then the flash will do the rest so we went into town we went to a place called the albert dock um, which is a lovely part of liverpool with the old industrial docks and um, yeah the keys it's amazing lovely lovely buildings and it was a great place to test out some um, flash photography which I've never never done before so yeah he, he, he showed me how to do that and I think we got some good shots I was actually surprised at myself and how well we done so yeah that was cool totally different part of photography I've never experimented with before but it was brilliant so you're gonna yes yeah, so yeah. you're gonna photograph me now okay so if you uh, get into position here yeah so uh, and so now I'm on one point eight shall I focus you first and then switch it to seven point one yes no that never worked it never went black I changed it to seven point one but it never went dark it is now no 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 it did look it worked it worked did it well look at the shot look at the shot. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah, nice. It did work. Look. Yeah, oh I like that. How cool is that? Yeah. But this is the beauty of using flash because you can manipulate the light and kind of make something look like it was shot um, at night or make something look like it was shot during the day. Yeah. So we can create something really dramatic and really cool like this. And you can see that with um, with a brick wall, with just a plain simple brick wall, it can make it look like a really professional um, looking image. So shall we take a few more? Yeah. All right. Too. All right. Let's have a look at that one. So let's go back to. Uh... Wow. Oh my <laughs> God, look at that. That's cool, isn't it? Look how dramatic that looks. <laughs> Dude. Wow. Dude. That's so good. <laughs> See how dramatic that looks. See, you remember we were talking about yesterday when you said, um, when we were photographing your dad and you said, can we get the background um, okay? Like, can we, can we yeah. expose the background? So at the moment it's white. See, now, if you'd have taken these same photographs... That would have been bleached out. Exactly. Yeah. That's what... See, so because you're balancing out, so now the flash was the same brightness as over there. In, um, so that's why you're able to get the best of can both worlds. Can you replicate this with that, replicate this type of shot without uh, out having a big rig like that? You... Well, you with, could have a smaller... With, like, an on-camera flash or... 
Uh, you, it wouldn't be uh, not uh, not on no. camera. No, no. It would, the flash would have to be off. You could get smaller soft boxes, but um, uh, but you wouldn't be able to recreate. And this. did you say sometimes instead of having it on a, a, a tripod, you just get someone to hold it? Yeah, so, um, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Some, um, if I'm going travelling, then yeah, I'll have someone holding it. Or if I'm like if I'm like halfway up a hill, then obviously um, a light stand won't hold it. But if you're just out here doing this sort of thing then you can easily do something like this. Yeah. This is really, really simple. Yeah. If you're on a flat surface, yeah. then... If yeah. I just pick a few models, get them to come to the docks for the day, yeah. I can build up a great portfolio. And exactly, yeah. yeah. You can create some really dramatic stuff like this. Yeah. Like, even, like even models as well, they would love something like this. Before today, I didn't think I'd something I'd be interested in, but after taking shots of you, and learning how easy it is to use flash and made up and like I think that's some of the best work I've ever done. So. Oh really? Yeah. So <laughs> oh. thanks for showing me. Cool man. No, I'm really, really pleased you enjoyed yourself. Shall really we? Really enjoyed it, honestly. So for a while now, since I was younger, I've been doing lots of charity events to raise awareness for my condition. And something I've always been into is public speaking and you know, if someone wants someone to speak at their event about my condition I always put my hands up and I always say, I'll do it because it's just something I enjoy doing. Now, years ago, I'd talk about the condition, how bad it was, how painful it was, how depressing it was, and how much it affects my life uh, negatively. Now, I'm putting a whole different slant on that. I've, I've, I've learned to focus on positive points of the condition and um, the the happiness I have in life you know EV isn't me you know it doesn't define who I am it's it's a it's a small part of me and you know that it's 10 percent of me the other 90 percent is a whole lot it's a whole different aspect you know there's a lot more things to me apart from EV and that's what I like to talk about I like to talk about how you know during my hardest times through pain, through depression, the one thing that's kept me going is positivity and smiling and laughter. Um, a great family helps uh, always, but if you surround yourself by loving, happy people, and you remember, even if you're having a total rubbish day, that you always smile, you're not only gonna help yourself and make yourself feel better, but you're gonna help the person you smile too. So even if you're walking down the street in London one day and you see someone that looks a bit, bit down, give them a smile. They might, they might not say, you know, oh, that really cheered me up. But you know in your heart that that's going to have an impact on that person and they're most likely going to remember that for the rest of their day. And it could help them. You know, they might have had a really bad time in work. Smile at them. Make the day better. And smile for yourself too no matter how hard life is you can't focus on it because it's just gonna you're just gonna keep going down and down and down you need to go up and up and up and smile and be positive before i finally left i still had one more gift to give james we're just about to go and surprise james now with his own travel kit Uh, James? Yeah? I've got a surprise for you. What? So, I spoke to Pixapro. No! And they have given you your own travel kit. You are kidding! I I've swear been talking about this all day. I know. And wow! We, and I've known about this all week. You've got your very own Tommy Reynolds travel kit. Wow! You've got your own softbox. <laughs> your own... Your own light stand. <laughs> That's your epic. own flash. It's the exact same kit that we use today, so you'll know how to use it, how to put it together. Wow! The same, same trigger, same flash, same softbox. You've got your own travel kit. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, man. Thank you. It's all boxed. It's all ready this to go. This means I can practice what I've learned. You can. You can yeah. do exactly what you've learned. Yeah. It's, it'll be exactly the same. Exactly wow. the same setup. <laughs> <laughs> How did you keep that a secret? <laughs> it was very hard. It, when you were saying stuff like, 
oh, I really wish I had my own kit. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this is like, this costs a lot of money usually. Yeah, this travel kit is worth about 500, 600 pounds. Wow. So they've given it Dad, to you. Given it this to is you. epic. <laughs> Thank you so much. So you've got everything you'll ever need to do your off camera flash. And, Thank uh, you. She's saying I'm yeah. just a lovely weekend he's out and this is the yeah. Icing on the cake for you, yeah. We, yeah. Pur we purposely wanted to keep it a surprise to the very last yeah. moment of us leaving. <laughs> Your trigger is inside the camera bag. Okay. The light's in there and you've got a light stand there. And, and a softbox. And the softbox. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the 90 centimetre softbox. The same softbox I took to India and took to Vietnam. You've wow. got your own version now. That's all I can say, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect this. And I'm so glad, like, the style of photography you taught me today, I really took to it and yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. Oh, I'm glad you I, liked it, I didn't it, think man. I'd ever be using flash, but it, honestly, I, it's opened my eyes up to how great images can be with flash. And... Well, you're absolutely welcome, and I've had a really, 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 really good uh, weekend with you, and uh, thanks for again for inviting me up. Thank you for coming on. Absolute pleasure. Well, you have a good week, man, and uh, yeah. we'll see, see you again soon, see yeah? In the future, um, I hope to maybe do events like, like Tommy, um, be hired by people to take pictures of them, maybe portraits, um, corporate events, some street photography commissions, and also there'll be a spec page on the website to buy some of my prints too, to make yeah make a little income from it. I, to be honest, I've, I've, I've never thought of setting up anything like this before, but I'm just thinking, I didn't think I'd ever be able to pick a camera up again, and now I can, so there's no limitations. The world's my oyster. Since the recording of this documentary, James could comfortably use his camera more creatively in manual mode, mainly photographing street photography and even the odd celebrity too, including Tom Holland who plays Spider-Man. Using his newly learned skills, James's photograph of Tom was sold at auction and managed to raise £42,000 for the charity Deborah. Deborah is the national charity that supports people who have EB. Within the charity, James launched a campaign called Hashtag Fight EB, which has raised over £280,000 to date. All of the money raised from the campaign will not only go to help sufferers live happy lives and create amazing memories, but also fund pioneering research and trials. None of this would be possible without your support, so please help Fight EB. To get behind this campaign and to donate, then go to www.fighteb.org.uk Thank you.